so this is happening. This is always happening. I have never not hated life. No, okay. Hi, I'm Hale, or Mr. Fluids. I am 28, black, trans, and under a ton of mental distress. <laughs> um. <laughs> Alright. Um, anyway. Um. Where do we start? the beginning I guess um, so I learned how to dissociate when I was six years old well I guess not necessarily learn because it wasn't like a conscious choice I made um, but yeah I was six, um, my mom was maybe eight months pregnant, and Giuliani was mayor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we were all asleep at the time. It was me, one of my older sisters, my mother, and my father. Uh, my sister and I shared a room at the time. Um, yeah, so we were asleep in our beds in the middle of the night. And SWAT broke down the door. <laughs> um, yeah, I tend to laugh at a lot of things. Sorry if that offends you. You're just gonna have to deal. <laughs> so this might be my earliest memory. I... Remember the screams. I remember the lights. I remember... The guns. The crying. I remember them walking on my father. I remember them tearing my home apart. I remember not understanding, but kind of understanding. And again, I was sick. Um, even with my brain doing everything it could to protect me from that, that event has affected every part of my life since then, and it probably always will, unfortunately, you know? That experience was not unique to me in any sort of way. Uh, we see that all the time, even in recent events, you know? I was lucky, considering. Very lucky. <laughs> and that's unfortunate. Okay, so... Dad's pretty much gone. Then my brother's born sick like real sick my eldest sister was already away at college at the time she you know escaped as early as she could and it was just me and my other sister but we're quite a few years apart so we were both just alone, dealing with our own shit. 
alone. You know? Yeah, so I'm alone. And spoiler, I'll pretty much always stay that way. Probably forever. Mm. Love that for me. Yay. Um. Yeah, so kind of the only person there for me at that time you know when I was a kid was my grandmother and <laughs> I think a big part of that was <laughs> that big I guess because she was you know partially paralyzed and couldn't leave me that that's some shit, man. <laughs> um, yeah. I spent most of my time in my grandmother's bed with her watching TV. That was my childhood, you know. I remember seeing movies like Tu Wong Fu and Boys Don't Cry for the first time with her on that bed and like knowing they were important because I really don't have all that many memories but you know those ones are actually there fragments at least and yeah just knowing they were important but not understanding why and that's a common thread in my life just not understanding why but knowing um, so as long as I can remember, life just, life just kind of hurt. <laughs> and it just wasn't really something I wanted to do. Yeah, it wasn't really until the third grade when someone noticed and my teacher had me sent to therapy for the first time. So, enter middle school, um, my grandmother leaves me, which I thought was, you know, fucking impossible, but she did, she managed to do that, um, so I'm alone, again, which was nice, neat, once again, love that for me, um, and then, you know, I'm attacked by hormones, <laughs> which is always fun. And my life just keeps hurting and I can't fucking handle it. I can't fucking handle any of that shit. But luckily, yay for me, I found the internet. <laughs> I found MySpace. And that, that shit. That shit came in clutch, man. It was a fucking mess, no doubt. <laughs> There's no denying that. But, like, I found my first small community of weirdos who, like, introduced me to music and books and movies that, like, helped shape me. They helped me feel less alone. And that was a first, you know? So I think it was like 7th grade when my MySpace friend, she told me to read The Perks of Being a Wallflower. I guess she could see that I myself was a wallflower and thought I would be able to relate to the protagonist, Charlie. And yeah, bitch, <laughs> relate I did. <laughs> I have read that book, mm, what has it been, maybe five times? Probably five times? Yeah, I've even given that book as gifts at times to people who I thought would get it, to people who I thought would need it as well. Yeah. That book, man. It was the first time I ever felt like anyone got it. Charlie just made sense to me. And for the first time, I felt understood. 
because I could understand him completely. It took me so long to realize why I related so deeply to Charlie. You know, not just because he was also a soft boy and had social anxiety. <laughs> no, it was because he was also a kid with PTSD. Duh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and representation is important. This is why. So don't just discount it as like some dumb teen book or movie or whatever. Cause, you know, that dumb book, as dumb as it may be, saved my life. And it did so more than once, that's for sure. So anyway, as I got older, life continued to hurt and not be fun for me. And it just got harder and like I was saying earlier being a wallflower we see things we hear things and we understand them you know we don't just we don't necessarily have to react or interact to get it it feels a lot like we're on the outside looking in but also like we understand in the deepest parts of us even if at the surface it's not something we're thinking about consciously we're ever absorbing <laughs> sponges um I, don't know. I was taught from the earliest of ages that being black was a problem I was taught that being different was a problem I, God, I didn't even know what queer was, but I knew what that was a problem. And it's not like it was just coming from the community and the world around me. You know, it came from my father too, being incredibly homophobic, xenophobic, transphobic, just full of hate. I, there was no way that whatever I was feeling, whoever I was, was going to be okay. And I guess my brain tried to protect me from that. And our way of doing that was to just stop living. Real fun times, man. Real fun. Um, yeah, it's like, I had no representation, you know, this was the 90s when everything started, um, I had no one I could look up to, I didn't even have anyone at home that I could trust, that I could turn to, no one on my side, there was no example of any of these things being okay, so how could I be okay to open up about them? To even think about them? T to have it even be a possibility? It wasn't a thing. So I guess in knowing that I was all kinds of wrong, I just stopped living. Like my existence wouldn't be accepted. Why exist really, you know? It wasn't a conscious effort at all, of course, but I guess my way of understanding it is that still to this day, Yeah, I'm afraid of being seen and it's not like just the physical seeing me it's also seeing who I am I do have a problem with the physical not representing who I feel I am but I'm working on that and accepting that um 
but it's like it's more than my entire existence I guess my brain didn't see it as something that would be accepted and valued and loved because I had no example of anything like that being accepted and valued and loved and no one giving me any sort of acceptance instilling value or telling me I was loved showing me that I was loved that if that existence wasn't worthwhile why exist in a way so we stopped you know I um I already wasn't much of a person but I had like fallen off I had been dropping out since at least middle school I'll say late elementary I mean the signs were there when I was sent to therapy in third grade but like I started dropping out in middle school I didn't graduate middle school honestly no one would really know I existed in my middle school I wasn't in the yearbook my name wasn't on any of the graduating class paraphernalia or anything like that there was no picture I wasn't there. I guess mission accomplished. I didn't exist. I stopped going outside. I didn't speak to anyone. I mean, I was alone. The only people I spoke to were the people I met online. All I had at the time was the internet. When I did go outside, it was usually just to go to the doctor. And I usually wasn't alone. If I was going outside, 95% of the time it was with my mom. Yeah. This is up until adulthood well until adulthood i had to go outside with my mom <laughs> this is how y'all fucked me up just saying so my life didn't start changing really until i was 23 i think somewhere around then by that time i had been hospitalized four times um i you know still having panic attacks every day just about maybe not in such obvious ways as I did yeah so hospitalized four times and my life was pretty much more of the same life hurt physically and mentally the pain has always been real for me but at this time tumblr was a thing at this time black tumblr was a thing and at this time i found representation for the first fucking time i found representation someone who's black who's non-binary who was brave enough to be honest and i found them on fucking tumblr of all places right another special little place on the internet that isn't always so great but it saved my life more than once no comment on that um so i was probably manic or something at the time but i decided to reach out and they i decided to reach out and i opened up and my one interaction stranger on the fucking internet is the reason why you have hail why i'm here today right now thank tumblr or curse tumblr depending on how you feel about me so that situation really changed me i guess about as much as the situation at the start of this little story time um but i'm gonna say the latter was for the better shouldn't you agree so now that i had accepted hail i wanted to give me a shot i wanted hail to have a real chance at life so i knew i had to get out into the world right i hadn't done anything with my life yet so i found myself doctors on my own because again alone no support um i had my friends from the internet but very far far few i by some miracle got through the process of changing my name on my own and this is a bitch that didn't go outside for months at a time for 10 years or so of my life at least um who had panic attacks 
every single time they have to go outside. I still do in their own little special way. As I said before, they just aren't the same. They don't manifest the same symptoms. They aren't as obvious. With age, I just learned to uh, mask things, get better at hiding them. I mean, I was always good, I suppose. No one ever fucking noticed anything. But, mm, this is a tangent, by the way. Let's not do that. <laughs> so yeah, I got my name changed by some miracle on my own. Mm. I had also managed to get my GED because of course I didn't graduate high school. I couldn't go outside. I couldn't even fucking deal with the uh, homeschooler coming to me. I was just that great. Mm. But yeah, I managed to get my GED. It took me two tries though because that anxiety boy. Mm. I did, <laughs> it split across two days, so I did the first day, couldn't go back for the second day, had to reschedule it for months down the line to go and do the second part. Uh, like everything else in life, it took me much, much longer than it should have. So once all of that was said and done, I knew I had to do something with this newfound life I was creating, finding for myself. You know, I needed, needed a life. Or so they say. They love to tell you that. You gotta do something. Mm. And I have always been into aesthetics. I mean, my fear of life always got in the way. Even with my collection. Still to this day, I haven't touched most of the products. My fear of living and existing and failing overall has always been so great that it stops me from doing anything, anything. <laughs> so, I had always been into aesthetic. I raised myself on the internet you know i've been a youtuber since day one i was very bigly much bigly into makeup but um didn't really have any hands-on practice not even that much on myself and i knew with my social anxiety the way i feel about people having to be like literally in their face and on top of them was going to be a lot for me. It probably wasn't going to be the best thing, you know, to go to school for that. A license. Do it. Wait, what? It's not a thing in makeup, really. So I decided to go for cosmetology. I was like, at least it's a trade that I can take with me anywhere in the world if one day I go somewhere. I did that. I went to cosmetology school. I almost flunked out because of attendance, because no one gives a fuck that you've had agoraphobia your entire life and this is your first time going outside alone that you can properly remember. <laughs> I've been trying to do it on a regular daily schedule. <laughs> this is new. You're an adult, it shouldn't be new. People don't give a fuck. Um, anyway. Yeah, so I almost flunked out of that sh Um, I graduated. I made some of my first, like, in real life friends. People that I still actually see to this day. Very rarely, but, you know, we communicate. It's difficult having bipolar disorder and all my other problems. People be at a real, real distance for me, but I, they know who they are. They know we love each other. They understand. Yeah. So I did that. I still don't have a license though, because that performance anxiety is real. I hope you should understand that by now. You're real visible when you're being watched and graded. Real visible. I was okay with salon. Well, 
the school salon when people weren't up my ass, I was like more than okay. I was kind of fucking great. Um, in the salon though, you know, I had one test run of a job where they were racist and we weren't, we're not going to get into that. And then I had one real job. It lasted almost a year. It taught me a lot. And the biggest lesson was probably that I cannot and probably will not just ever work like that again ever i don't think it's a thing for me i'm not cut out for that shit especially not with white people the things i would just absorb being around them and not being able to say anything or do anything and being the only one like me no even my fucking doctors have told me just get the fuck out of there because that shit <laughs> killed. It truly destroyed my skin. And now I have really great, fun, amazing eczema that only gets worse with stress. So it hasn't gone away since February, at least. Oh boy, oh boy. It's only gotten worse since then. It just will not fully heal. So yeah, that job ended in February, actually. Um, right before my birthday, I think, like a week before. It wasn't the funnest situation, but also folks started trying it. I was like, I'm good. Goodbye. And it stayed that way. And then, you know, Rona came to visit and she stayed that way too. I don't want to discount myself for actually being able to do that being able i'm sorry i'm a mumbler you're gonna learn that and have to live with that unless i learn how to enunciate and project but i probably won't mm -hmm. yeah i don't want to discount myself for even getting to that place and being able to do that i mean bitch you heard the fucking story you were here with me i am a brand new fucking baby to the world and people really don't get that it took me getting to that job and realizing how like stressful and how like traumatic it was for me to realize like <laughs> this bipolar disorder is really a fucking thing for you and you gotta get that shit in check it got me fucking rapid cycling and i have not stopped since <laughs> two birthdays ago i stopped harm for the fucking first time in years and since then Stress has only built and gotten worse. The more I've gone outside, the more I've tried to live a life and be around people and learn and grow. <laughs> like it's only gotten fucking worse. And my temper, my camera's getting hot, so I'm probably gonna finish my face and then come back to finish my eyes in this story. It only got fucking worse and just made my bipolar disorder worse and worse to where I'm like cycling every fucking week every couple of days i am like full-blown agoraphobic again with everything that's going down it is so hard for me to leave my house i made a fucking fire escape into a patio a little escape for myself so i could have some outside without being outside amongst you nasty motherfuckers and i still can't even go out the fucking window anymore everything going on in the world just brought back so much trauma and fear and everything to the surface everything that i thought i had finally learned to like accept and live with and grow past and was getting through uh mm, kicked me on my ass mm, fuck you bitch <laughs> you thought <laughs> sure did though i sure fucking did and i've been learning my lesson and having to deal with that and that's where i've been lately it's been real, real fun. Mm. Mm. I'll be right back.